And welcome back to another episode of Apolitical. I am your co-host, Alan Srokey. And I'm your other co-host, Tyler Goldberg. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Alan. How are you? Doing well. We- uh, today we wanted to talk about something that we, I think, briefly touched on a few episodes back, but wanted to go into more detail on. So no. why don't you uh, do your favorite thing and level set yeah. for the folks at home? No no time to just chat today. No. We're diving We're right into straight it. straight to business. Yeah. Well, on that note, what... <laughs> Yeah, we do have a, a pretty interesting topic today that we have alluded to in the past. Today we're talking about ballot initiatives, um, one of the the forms of political advertising that I think is probably least discussed mm-hmm. in this space. And in the final month uh, of a campaign, is really kind of they really kind of rocket to the forefront, and I think ways that people wouldn't expect. Absolutely. So, um, you know, ballot initiatives. Every state has them. Every state has their own rules on like you know what qualifies in a given cycle. So, you know, some states have more than others. California is a pretty great example of that. Uh, most expensive state in the country. They, the rules of that state allow them to create dozens of new ballot initiatives pretty much every cycle. And I believe in 2022, they had the most expensive ballot initiative uh, campaign in U.S. history. Um, r- it, r- around it was, I think, the most expensive single campaign in U.S. history outside mm-hmm. of presidential. And I don't think anyone was really expecting that to be the case that year. Yeah, I think uh, th- so. It was two gambling initiatives uh, back to back. Right. Uh, p- props twenty six and twenty seven, mm-hmm. um, and they saw like I think it was close to four hundred million dollars mm-hmm. in advertising. Yeah. Um, which is obviously huge, uh, and you know it, it is something that affects. At that time, rates and advertising in California. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the interesting things we've talked about is that many times, and, and we'll go into some some cases where this is not the case. Yeah. Uh, but many times, it's getting a little crowded on the table, <laughs> folks. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky this cup is totally filled with coffee right now. Right, of course. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> so many times, these ballot initiatives don't fall on you know purely partisan. Uh, lines. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, you know, the gambling initiatives, it was not, you know, Republicans were in favor of X, Democrats were in favor of Y. Mm-hmm. A- and as you were saying before we went on air, uh, that, that really sort of increases the importance of advertising. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like like you said, like they're not really, not all are partisan. Now, some are. Like, uh, for example, this year we were seeing a lot of abortion-related ballot mm-hmm. initiatives in places like Florida and Arizona. Uh, that's going to affect voter turnout. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's whatever decisions people may have made up about their mind about the candidates that they're voting for, uh, you know, the abortion ballot initiatives gives you a reason to go to the ballot box, even if you're not really enchanted by either side. Sure. And the, the hope is that, yeah. oh, well, if I'm going out to, to vote in, in mm-hmm. you know, in favor of, you know, abortion rights, while I'm there, I may think twice about voting for a Republican who may be sure. against voting rights. Um, and it's interesting because that's a strategy that the Republican Party really successfully nationalized in the early 2000s mm-hmm. around gay marriage. And and states, uh, a lot of big swing states, you know, 2004, uh, 2006, had gay marriage bans on their uh, on their ballots mm-hmm. in an effort to drive up turnout. And it really worked for Republicans yeah. uh, at that time. So Obviously, those bans were, were struck down uh, 10 years later, right. but uh, it's an interesting thought, I, I think, to, that clearly political parties see this as a way to, mm. to get turnout up. Yeah, and so like I think that's a really big reason that in certain cases that you see a lot of spending put on these ballot initiatives really in the last month of a cycle because it can be an additive to turnout. Mm -hmm. I think another big reason, and this is not really apolitical, dare I say. (laughs) You like that. Roll credits. (laughs) An apolitical reason that um, I think a lot of these ballot initiatives get a lot of of spending in these last months is because the language around a lot of them are very confusing. Often intentional. Often intentionally. Um, a, you know, a yes vote might actually mean no for whatever you're you're, you're voting mm-hmm. around. So there's a big, a lot of these these special interest groups that are funding these ballot initiative uh, campaigns. Th- there's a there's a reason you got to yeah. get in front of people and actually explain what a yes vote or a no vote does for your position. And it's really hard to communicate that message early in the campaign cycle mm-hmm. where people may hear it, but they may not retain it. Like, that, you kind of need to get them right now before they go to the ballot box while yep. they're start, where I think the majority of voters really start tuning in in the last one or two months of a campaign. Well, and I, I think that that was a really interesting thing we saw in Ohio recently mm-hmm. around yeah. their abortion uh, initiative, which, which obviously passed uh, and enshrined more abortion rights into state law. 
Before that, there was a precursor ballot initiative that uh, took place in August, I believe, right. about the threshold for what it takes to approve a ballot initiative. Which so, is specific to Ohio. Which was goes back to, to Ohio, what we were saying earlier. But basically, Ohio lawmakers, I think uh, Republican lawmakers, seeing that the abortion rights amendment was, was likely to pass, yeah. they tried to raise the threshold needed to pass an amendment, I believe up to 60% from 50%. And it almost became a proxy vote on the abortion initiative, uh, which, again, these things are, are, are they're not incredibly transparent. Uh, they can be very confusing to voters. I mean, they can be confusing to you and I, and we're experts in the space of, yeah. of political advertising. Uh, so, so I think that's a really an, a interesting way of looking at it yeah. is the – the fights are not just about the the issue in the uh, in the ballot initiative, but rather how they're administered. A lot of ballot initiatives that maybe go under the radar, uh, maybe don't see the huge amount of spending, can still be really consequential. Uh, New York this this year is going to have a few uh, ballot initiatives on um, charter amendments to how the city government works, yeah. which is important, obviously, but is not the type of thing that may get hundreds of millions of dollars in special interest funding. So I guess just to to, to sort of put a bow on this yeah. one. For this year, what are some of these ballot, in, now that we're in October, mm -hmm. what are some of these ballot initiative campaigns that you've seen that you think are going to surprise a lot of people with like how much money is going to get put behind them? I mean, I think you have a few of the sort of the standard of the past few years. Yeah. Uh, in the post-Roe world, you've seen a lot of states with, um, with abortion-related ones. So mm -hmm. uh, Florida, Arizona really jump out at me. Uh, Arizona mainly because that state is so expensive to advertise in to begin with during a political cycle, you know, that's going to have to have a lot of money to, to get through. Sure. But I think California is once again going to be at the forefront here. We've seen a ton of spended, spending related to um, their uh, health care uh, rights and, and things of that nature. Uh, and so I think those ballot initiatives are going to be huge. Again, the most talked about ballot initiative right now in California it has to do with uh, crime policy. Right, uh, right. That may not see as much spending as some of the others, but is the one that is probably most uh, on the top of Californians' minds because I'm sure they've been hearing about it in sort of these more informal ways. So it'll be really interesting to see that proposition is supported by uh, this collection of uh, retail uh, organizations. It'll be interesting to see if they put their financial weight behind it in addition to their, you know, political weight. Well, it's a lot to digest, a lot to look out for, uh, for, for the folks at home. For the folks at home. Um, but yeah. Read the ballot initiatives and flip over your ballot. In New York, these are often on the back of the ballot. Don't leave them blank. It's really important to participate. What a lovely that's, way. That's what a the, lovely way to end things. That's you know, it's, it's October. It's get out the vote time. Stay informed out there, everyone. <laughs> I, I'm Alan Soroki. And I'm Tyler Goldberg. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Apolitical. Mm -hmm.